You may have seen an article recently claiming that after only three years, Tesla Model 3 batteries degrade to under 65% of their EPA rated range. However, the way the data is reported in this article is extremely deceiving. And in addition, when you actually look at the data accurately, it actually paints a picture that Tesla batteries last a long time. So stick around and I'll show you the truth about Tesla's battery degradation over the years and explain how articles like this one from Jalopnik is skewing the data. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. When you read the opening statements in this Jalopnik article and take it at face value, the data seems very concerning. Now I do want to point out that the data that this article actually references is accurate and I'll talk about that. However, the conclusion that the author gets to in this article and the way it is framed here is extremely deceiving and inaccurate. At the end of the day, if a person who doesn't know a lot about electric vehicles reads this article, most likely they're going to come away after reading this and believe that Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys have a battery degradation problem. But actually the data suggests the complete opposite and Tesla's batteries in the Model 3 and the Model Y, for example, in this case that we're talking about actually last quite a long time. So with that being said, let me point out the inaccuracies here and then also show the accurate interpretation of the data cited in this article. Okay, I wanna start with that first sentence, which reads, a recent study found that Tesla vehicle batteries degrade at a faster rate than the manufacturer's warranty assures. It's never good when the first sentence in an article is completely incorrect. And that's the case in this particular instance. That first sentence has zero truth in it. It's actually completely factually False. In addition, this first sentence also reveals that the author of the article completely misunderstands what Tesla's battery warranty actually covers and the actual recurrent auto data that they cite. So as I expose the error in this sentence, let's first start with Tesla's actual battery warranty and what that states. So for the long range or performance Tesla Model 3 or Y, Tesla guarantees the battery for eight years or 120,000 miles. And then they state here, whichever comes first with minimum 70% retention of battery capacity over the warranty period. But notice that 70% of the battery capacity, not 70% of the EPA range. No automaker guarantees that the vehicle after a set period of time is going to get a percentage of the EPA range because real world range varies wildly based on circumstances, which I will discuss more later on in the video. I wanted to make that really clear here because the rest of this article reveals that the author misunderstands that completely. With that being said, going to the second sentence in the article, it reads, recurrent discovered that the range plummeted to 64% of the EPA rated range after three years after combining data from 12,198 Tesla Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. Now, technically speaking, what is stated in this particular sentence is accurate based on the data that recurrent shared. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use the word plummeted in relation to this because as I will describe, this is actually not a huge deviation from a brand new battery here. In the next section of the article that I wanna highlight, we really see how the author's misinterpretation of this data completely leads them to the wrong conclusion. The author wrote, quote, the issues arise with the warranties. Tesla guarantees its batteries will retain at least 70% of their rated range for eight years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Higher price models have lengthier warranties. For example, the Model X has a 150,000 mile guarantee. Notice that the author here claims that Tesla guarantees 70% of their rated range for their vehicles, but that's completely inaccurate. Tesla does not guarantee 70% of their rated range. However, they do guarantee 70% of their battery capacity. And once again, those are completely different. 70% of EPA range guarantee, that's not something that Tesla guarantees and no automaker guarantees that, but 70% of battery capacity, yes, that is something that Tesla guarantees. So then with this interpretation, the author makes it look like a bunch of Tesla vehicles should have their batteries replaced because the author wrote, quote, recurrence degradation curve shows most Tesla vehicles dipping below 70% after one year. 
Now, obviously, if this were the case, and I'll explain more on this, why that's completely inaccurate, and I believe I've already kind of painted that picture, and your mind may already be there, but nonetheless, if Tesla's batteries, if most of their batteries were actually dropping, their Model 3 and Model Y batteries were dropping to less than 70% after one year, that means that pretty much every Tesla on the road would have a brand new battery pack in it because they'd be going bad. But obviously, that's not the case if you follow Tesla closely at all. You know that one-year-old Teslas are not commonly getting their batteries replaced. So obviously the author is completely inaccurate with their misunderstanding of the data. So with that being said, let's actually look at the real data that the author cites this article by Recurrent Auto. And I definitely recommend that you go over to recurrentauto.com and check out the data. And I will link to this article down below. And there are a lot of great uh, articles on this website that are very helpful when it comes to electric vehicles. So I definitely recommend that you go check that site out and read this article. But nonetheless, Recurrent allowed me to use this chart here from the article. And as you can see, with the data for the Model 3, when it comes to the Model 3 range degradation, and in this particular case, it's related to battery age, you can see that at the very beginning that there, with zero days, so a brand new battery pack, starts at a little bit over 72% of the EPA range. And after approximately the three year mark, the data here shows the vehicle averaging around 64% of the EPA range. So if you do some basic math going from 72 to around 64% after roughly three years or so, that's a drop of 8%. We're not talking about a drop of 36%, we're talking about a drop of 8%. Even after 1,500 days or so based on this data, which equates to a little bit over four years, that number is still hovering around that 64% mark. So once again, only an 8% deviation from the brand new battery pack. So based on this data, I would expect that after once again, around three to five years or so, that the battery packs in these vehicles are degrading around 8%. That is way below the 70% guarantee, meaning that you'd still be at around a 92% capacity of that battery as when it was new. So this data is in no way suggesting that Tesla's batteries, after a very short period of time, are degrading well over 30%. In addition, the reason why that data starts at a little bit over 72% of the rated range here with a brand new battery is because EPA range, EPA rated range, does not necessarily equal real world range. Now, I don't wanna get deep into the weeds on this, and I will link to an article down below if you want to read more about how the EPA tests electric vehicles. And in addition to that, there were some recent EPA rule changes for 2024 that led to Tesla lowering the range estimates for several of their vehicles. And actually, the 2024 models now get ranges, real world ranges, much closer to their EPA ratings. So for example, the 2023 long range all wheel drive Model Y with 19 inch wheels got an EPA rated range of 330 miles, whereas the 2024 model has an EPA rated range that dropped 20 miles down to 310 miles of range. So with that being said, if you were to take that new EPA rule change and apply that to recurrence data, or if you were to take the data from 2024, three years into the future and take a look at the same chart, three to five years in the future, and you were to look at the percentage there, that beginning percentage should be quite a bit higher than what recurrence starting percentage there is because of the rule change, meaning that Tesla's vehicles currently with that rule change are getting a higher percentage of their EPA rated range. Now there are quite a few factors that can contribute to an electric vehicle getting less than its EPA rated range. And some of those have to do with the temperature, the speed you're driving, your driving style, whether or not you have a headwind while you're driving, or if there's elevation changes. Factors like that, and there are more than that, but factors like that can influence how much range you get versus your EPA rated range. For example, if you go over to tessie.com forward slash stats, they have several really good charts here based on a bunch of different drives for Tesla vehicles. And you can see there the efficiency of Tesla's various vehicles here based on how fast they're driving. So as this chart shows, somewhere after around the mid 30 mile per hour range, the faster you go after that, the efficiency of the vehicle starts to go down. And driving highway speeds, that efficiency is quite a bit lower than driving around at like city speeds. In addition to that, the exterior temperature also plays a big role in how much range you actually get with your electric vehicle. And in this chart, you can see how the colder temperatures do influence how efficient Tesla's vehicles are and really all electric vehicles in general. Now the recurrent auto article does also include this same information 
for the Tesla Model Y. And I just wanna briefly highlight that as well. And based on this chart, you can see that with a brand new battery, this data suggests the vehicle, the Model Y, gets around 70% of its EPA rating. And you can see that that drops down a little bit after a thousand days or so to a little bit under 64%. But once again, that's just a little bit over a 6% deviation from a brand new battery. It's not a huge deviation, that's 6%. So really this chart is just demonstrating around a 6% battery capacity loss. In the next section of the article that I wanna highlight, it seems like the author cannot seem to figure out why there are not more EV battery replacements out there. The author wrote, quote, it would be useful if there was full access to recurrence data set because the electric vehicle venture noted that only 2.5% of all EVs had their batteries replaced. Its data shows that 15% of replacements were from 2015 model year vehicles and older, while vehicles from 2016 and newer accounted for less than 1%. So once again, when I read that, it seems like the author is trying to figure out why there have not been more electric vehicle batteries replaced if, for example, Tesla batteries are degrading so sharply so quickly. And once again, the reason is, is because the author is completely misunderstanding the data altogether and they jump to completely the wrong conclusion. Going back to the recurrent auto article and EV replacement percentages here, the author made it very clear in this article that other than the battery recalls for the Chevrolet Bolt and the Hyundai Kona Electric, battery replacements based on recurrence data are pretty rare. In addition, the author added, quote, across all years and models outside of big recalls, only 2.5% have been replaced. This increase from last year is entirely due to older cars. For cars older than 2015, the replacement rates are 13%, but under 1% for cars from 2016 and newer. The recurrent auto data actually shows that EV batteries are lasting quite a long time and that EV battery replacement for newer EVs is actually quite rare. It's not a super common occurrence. So Tesla's batteries do not have a major battery problem, and the author of this article is completely misunderstanding the data. So that being said, let's actually look at some more real world data to show how much Tesla's batteries actually degrade with time and with use in reality. So once again, when you properly interpret recurrence data, you see that the data suggests around a six to 8% battery capacity loss after a few years. And it is important that you note that recurrence data here does not include how many miles these cars were driven. It's actually just based on time, which is a unique way to have this data represented. And I actually am really happy that recurrent did this because it's different than usual. Usually you'll see uh, battery degradation based on the miles on the car, but batteries do degrade not only by how many times they are charged, but also with age. So this is an important metric. Beyond that, if you go to tessie.com forward slash stats, once again, that site and this particular chart that I pulled up right here is based on over 169 million drives as of May 30th, 2024. So based on Tessie's data from what we can see in this chart, it looks like with a Model S, for example, after 100,000 miles of driving is expected on average to lose around 7.4% of its battery capacity. The Model X after 100,000 miles, 8.4%, the Model Y, 9.1%, and the Model 3, 12.2%. In addition to that, in Tesla's 2023 impact report, they included this particular slide with a chart showing the battery retention of the Model 3 and Model Y after 200,000 miles. And at the end of that paragraph on the left, it's written, quote, even after 200,000 miles of usage, our batteries in Model 3 and Model Y lose just 15% of their capacity on average, while batteries in Model S and X lose just 12% of their capacity on average. So once again, going back to the data that was cited in that Jalopnik article, when you have an accurate understanding of the data that Recurrent Auto provided and combine that with the other available data that I just shared, it paints a completely different narrative than was mentioned in that Jalopnik article. And the problem is an article like this could scare first time EV buyers away from buying an electric vehicle when actually this data from Recurrent Auto once again shows that replacing EV batteries is not that common. And the additional data that I shared really points to the fact that Tesla's vehicle batteries actually last a long time. With that being said, if there's someone that you know that needs this information, please share this video with them to kind of correct misunderstandings that are out there. This is a really important topic and I believe an accurate understanding of the data here is extremely important.
Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.